Hey there, my gorgeous friends on the internet. If you like styling your applications with Tailwind, oh boy, this is an exciting week for you. Have you not had wind of the news yet? Because V4 got released just a couple of days ago with a brand new engine, a bunch of new awesome features, and a new migration guide. So now you don't even need a Tailwind config TS file anymore. Thank the Lord. It's pretty exciting to see the feature of Tailwind. I know in V5, Trump also announced that they're gonna make Tailwind great again. Might be some tariffs involved, but we'll see how the future holds up. So one of the first things I want to highlight is definitely the speed of this new engine. As you can see, when you're running a full build on your CSS, uh, on version 3.4, it would take 378 milliseconds, whereas on v4 is only 100. So that's quite a bit of an improvement. Now, a lot of times you're not going to have new CSS. And as you can see, with an incremental build with no new CSS, that drops down to microseconds now. So 182 times quicker uh, than v3.4. And also with new CSS, it's still like 8.8 .8 times faster. So that is fantastic. Okay, so let's see how we can set this up. So I'll just do a new window here. Uh, the Next.js setup is pretty much the same. There's just a little uh, little thing that you need to do with the post CSS, but other than that, uh, it's pretty much the same. So I'll just open up uh, Tinyux. I don't know Tinyux, but I know Tmux. Maybe that's like an Eastern European version of it. And I'm just gonna run Vite in here. So npm create Vite at latest. Let's get this initialized. We're gonna say tail v4. And I'm going to go with React here and TypeScript. So to get this running in Vite, we'll need to run this command npm install Tailwind CSS, and then we'll use this Tailwind CSS Vite uh, plugin here on top of it. Because with this now, you don't need to configure a post CSS file anymore. You can just simply import it as a plugins like that, and then you are pretty much done. And that's kind of the main difference between setting it up with Vite versus with Next.js. With Next.js, you'll still have to do the post CSS configuration yourself. But I'll show you how we can do that in just a sec. Okay, now that we have that installed, we can simply open this up. I'll do uh, NeoVim here, but you can use VS Code if you want, whatever, <laughs> whatever floats your boat. Uh, and then we can just simply head over to the TS config here. Right, and we need to, not TS config, sorry, the Vite config file, right? There we go. And then here we're using React, but we can also pop in Tailwind CSS. And again, with the Vite plugin here, post CSS and like the auto prefixers, all of that jazz is automatically supported here and is integrated within this plugin which is fantastic because then you don't need to have a separate uh, post CSS file here set up for you. You still need to do that with Next.js, but not here anymore. Just simply passing it here in the Tailwind config and also heading over to your like global uh, CSS file. So in my case, it's index.css. If I simply head over here and add an import and I can just say Tailwind CSS, we are good to go. This is done. As you can see, that text turns red there. If I go over to app TSX, as you can see on the button here, I put a style of text red of 500. If I do a text of 4XL, boom, there we go, that works. Let me show you how you can also set this up with Next.js. So this is the Next.js project running here that I've been migrating over. And this is running with Shatsy and Styles. And one of the main problems I was having was uh, with, the, with the plugins, right? Tailwind CSS and Shad CN, well, Shad CN uses this Tailwind Animate, right, to do like the accordion animations and stuff like that, and that wasn't working. So I'll show you how I set all of this up uh, for it to work with Shad CN as well. So again, all you need is the Tailwind V4 here, the post CSS installed, and then this is the only difference here. So as you can see here, we can just pass in that Tailwind post CSS config here, and you should be good to go. Otherwise, in your global CSS, what well, you can do is something like this. So you can import Tailwind like we did before, but you can also configure this theme here like this. So you can say add theme, and then you can simply create your own variables here that are going to be available through your whole application. All right. So this is kind of like setting up root like that and setting your variables here. But probably one of my favorite features is in this theme file. Now I can simply just use Tailwind colors here, right? So I don't have to go out and fetch hex codes and fetch RGB colors. I can simply just pass down all the Tailwind colors. And this is kind of what I recommend doing anyway. Like don't go find a bunch of random colors and stuff like that. Just use the Tailwind colors. They're really, really good. And you can get really, really far with it. Now here's the cool bit. I can set a layer team here with the dark mode on, and then I can simply toggle it by checking this variant. So I can say variant dark. If it's dark, 
then I can just switch over to it. So have a look at this. If I go to light mode, look at that, it automatically adjusts. So there we go. That's how you can get this working. As for the plugins, you can simply import it like that, add plugin, and then pass down the name of that plugin. Again, a couple of them might not be working, but a lot of them will now as of time of filming this video. This was working like a couple of days ago already. So should be good. Another big feature that I like is the dynamic classes that they have introduced now in V4. So if you remember previously, uh, let's say I'm gonna set a background of red on this one of like 700, right? So we can see it. So if I do something like padding top of four, right? Just so we can see it, all right? You got six there right? You'd have these fixed in size, right? So you could go two, four, six, eight, twelve. 12, sorry, 10, 12, and up to like a specific value. So if you tried to set a height as well, height, I think the highest you'd be able to go up was like 96, but that's it, right? Because what these are is just utility classes, right? So they were hard coded. So height 96 would be that specific height, like 24 RAM or whatever, or how much ever they have it set as. But now the cool bit is with height, with width, with padding and all of these, we can set dynamic values. So I can do P3 now and that'll work fine. If you remember, if I did like padding top of, of three, that would have not worked before. It would have just canceled it out entirely. So I can just pick any arbitrary value here uh, and it will work. So this is fantastic. I really like that. Sometimes I did want to set like a specific width here like that. And now it just works without any problem. Oh, and by the way, this applies to uh, grids as well. So I can do grid calls of like 11 if I want to. And if we have a look here, I'll get rid of this padding of this background red here because it'll be a bit hard to see. Uh, but there we go. If we remove this and if we hover over it, look at that. We have 11 little grids. Another big change was the modernizing the color palette over from RGB to OK Ocal. Is that it? Ocal? Uh, <laughs> apparently it has a wider gamut but, and like more vivid co colors and whatnot, but I honestly cannot tell the difference because we can actually test this. Uh, down here, as you can see, they got the gradients now, so you can also like angle different gradients, but you can also set on these gradients if you want it to be the RGB version or, or the like local version of it, right? So check this out. Now you can actually set if your gradient should be an sRGB or an local like that. Now, can we actually see the difference? I can see a fucking thing. It looks the same to me. I honestly can't see any difference, but Regardless, we still have this ability to like super easily rotate around the angles here, which I bloody love. Look at that, 95, boom, easy. Now, probably the best part is that you have access to all these different gradients now. So you have radial gradient, you have conic gradient as well right here. So you can do something like this. You can do a BG radial at 25 and 25 like that, and that works. So there we go. It's really exciting that we officially have you know, all these different uh, types of gradients that we can use. Uh, I would love to see the ability to also control these gradients because right now you still like cannot have any dynamic values in here. Uh, so it has to be done through a style tag like that. So let's say you want these like zero and the zero percent here to move based on your mouse movement. So here's a little example I made. Let's say you want to have this like nice little subtle animation here when you hover over a card like that. So that's using a uh, a gradient as well, right? Like a radial gradient. And this is how I did it. So I just simply made two variables here in my index CSS, right? We defined the team. Uh, we added some colors here, for example, and then we defined the gradient X and gradient Y. I applied zero to both of them. And then in my app.tsx, let me just quickly guide you here. Uh, I simply set as a background image. I pass in the radial gradient, circle at, pass the variables down there like that. And I'm using motion here, uh, which is like frame or motion. You can simply do on mouse move here and just simply update uh, the, the, the two variables based on where the mouse's uh, current X and Y position is. And that's literally, like this is literally all the code. It's like two lines of code here. It's just literally setting that ref so we can update it, but that's pretty much it. So you'd still need to reach out for something like, um, you know, to like directly apply it here to your styles. Another huge update is that the container queries are now officially supported by default without the need of 
adding another plugin or something like that. So what are uh, like container queries in a nutshell? Well, essentially we usually kind of adjust things based on the viewport height, right? So basically if there's not enough space in the viewport, uh, then things are gonna either collapse, right? Or get modified. Like let's, we wanna put it in block now, right? We don't want it to be flex row. We want a flex call or we want uh, maybe two grids on a large viewport and then one grid on a small viewport. Whereas container queries are kind of aware of of themselves and their own size. So, hey, if I'm this size, then I should look like this. If I'm smaller size, I should look like this. Okay, so it's kind of independent. You can essentially take something that's wrapped in a container query and put it anywhere and it's gonna look good. Whereas you don't really have that kind of flexibility with uh, just the viewport on its own, right? Okay, so here's a quick example of the container query. So I just applied it to a div here, this outer div that wraps the card around. And now basically this parent div dictates uh, how the inner card should change based on its size. So for example here, now this is irregardless of the viewport height. I simply said that on a small, on a small width, if this element, if this like parent container is small, the text should be small in it as well. As well as if the minimum width is on Excel, so pretty large, then the text should be for Excel as well. There we go. So now simply, Without doing anything with a viewport, I can, if I just change the size of this, I can say max width is medium on this or something like that. As you can see, all the stylings automatically adjust. You can also name these containers if you want. So you can do something like container slash main or container slash card, you know, and you can also use arbitrary values in here. So you can say at min 475 pixels, just how, how you can also do with width, right? You can do width and then you can do 350 pixels, all right? So you can still apply these to the query containers. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Other than that, there's a couple of little tidbits here and there, like the not hover. Uh, that's a pretty cool one that they added. Let's see what else is here. Yeah, that's pretty much it. We also have the supports, uh, which is pretty cool to check if uh, you know, a style is supported by the browser that you're currently on or not. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Now, the one thing I'm a bit bummed about is that they don't support safe listing colors. Now you might be like, well, why is that important? Let me show you an example. So check this out. Since we already have the tailwind colors, one nice thing would be, well, this is why I did them V3. I basically passed down a color here for my badge. As you can see, I have a JavaScript badge, a Postgres, Next.js, and I would pass down a compatible tailwind color. So you can imagine like teal, blue, rose, right? All of those different colors that they have. I love Tailwind colors. They're already great uh, by themselves. Like look at this palette. This is fantastic. So this is what I do. I pass to this component like, hey, I have red, okay? But when I'd say red, this would automatically generate me all the different shades that I need for, uh, look at this buttons, for example, right? We got the nice and blue and this, and then if I switch to light, it'll be a lighter version of it with a darker. So that's kind of the same thing I did for the tags, and that looked fantastic. Uh, but with V4, you don't have the ability to safe list those colors as well. So when you pass it down like this, BG, and then you interpolate the color here with 950, it's just not gonna work. It's not gonna get recognized at all. Uh, so hopefully that's one thing that's coming that I really want this to be added. I saw some workarounds with adding it to, into a text file and stuff like that, but I'm not getting into any of that. So anyway, yeah, hope you enjoyed this little episode. Let me know what you think of Tailwind V4. Are you excited for it? Are you not? So hope you enjoy. I'll catch you in the next one.